Hey there, it's Elizabeth and welcome back to a different sort of video. Um, I think hopefully this is going to be a short and sweet video. Now, what you're looking at here is a whole lot of Christmas stuff, right? And I know that most everybody has de-Christmased their homes and uh, all of that, put everything back away and our homes are back to uh, their normal selves and yeah, feeling good about the new year. I'm still on Christmas, okay? <laughs> so I did want to show you something that I do every year. I've done it um, for the past one, two, three, four, five, six years, except I skipped somehow 2013. I'm not really sure what happened, but I wanted to come on and share with you a quick and easy way to preserve or keep your Christmas cards that you get sent. If you get sent Christmas cards. So every year, I know I always put out a Christmas newsletter or, well, yes, I put out a Christmas newsletter every year and I put out, um, sometimes we send um, photo cards or something like that as well. But one of my favorite things, and also my kids too, they used to fight over who was going to go to the mailbox, you know, starting from after Thanksgiving to, you know, into even the new year. And I would have to like, you know, evenly disperse the Christmas cards. So each kid had the same amount of Christmas cards to open, you know, and they've always loved looking at the Christmas cards and receiving Christmas cards and reading up about everybody. Now, I know that a lot of people recycle their cards. I think that's what happened in 2013. <laughs> but um, I really enjoy keeping them. I like to see over the years how people have changed. I like to see who got married. I like to see families grow. Um, I like to see new babies, you know, and new grandbabies and all of that. So I am, I guess, like a memory preserver or I like to preserve memories, you know, and these are cards from friends and family, you know, that I want to keep. And one of the things that's important to me as well is, you know, everyone is not around for forever, you know, so um, I don't mean to sound morbid or anything, but I like looking back in, in these books and maybe someone has passed on and but you still have their handwriting. And that to me is just very sentimental and very special. I'm not a very sentimental person normally, but for this I am. So let's just get into it, okay? I'm gonna show you the new book that I made, which is over there, and um, but I'm just gonna show you how simple it is. And again, these are the Christmas cards that I receive throughout the years, you know? So this one here was just like made from scrapbook. Oh, that's the other thing too. I use up scrapbook paper that I would never otherwise use, okay? So this, the cover is just made from, and let's see, oh, see, here's my 2012 newsletter, right? So I put that right in the front, and then I keep the cards thereafter. And I'm noticing that this is coming up. Oh, look at there. I use double-sided tape. Not a good idea, apparently. I have to glue that down. Um, so yeah, 2012, I just poked holes in all of the cards and letters and whatever, stacked them all up, lined them all up, and just weirdly bound them with with twine and put some little charms, you know, on, on the edges or on the spine. So that's how I did that one. Super simple. This one, I think this year I had received a cinch for Christmas, and so that's how I bound this book. And this is 2014. And yeah, I don't want to, let me see, I don't want to show, okay, it, like pictures or anything like that of other people. But see, I just, I punched all of the cards and letters and then cinched it together. And the outside cover is just, again, scrapbook paper with a piece of cardboard, okay, front and back. So that was 2014. Then we had 2015, I did use the cinch to punch the holes, but then I use this weird stretchy twine to just wind it all around. Um, again, just cardboard with extra paper. Our Christmas letter from 2015. And then all the cards, you know, that I received during that year. And that was 2015. 
Now this one here is 2016 and this was actually a Christmas junk journal I had received in a swap way back in 2014. And so I decided to use it to hold my Christmas cards. So I did the same thing using the innards of the junk journal that I received and made this my Christmas card um, preserver. What do you call it? I don't know, journal. Then this one was last year's, 2017, and now this one I made a little bit differently because I did actually attach two uh, signatures in here, and what I, this is just cardboard, right? And then, sorry for the glare, this is our family picture, and then what I do when people have, like their, Chris, here's our Christmas letter, 2017, <laughs> is I make their card or whatever, or their photo like I did here, into a pocket. So I just glue it on the three sides, and then it makes a little pocket so I can tuck their little, um, you know, Christmas letter in. And again, this is like old, really old um, Christmas scrapbook paper that I was never going to use, right? So here's the top of it. There are two signatures in here. And then I just glue or tape or whatever the Christmas cards in. And it just works a charm, right? And it's in this nice, neat little book with organza ribbon for a tie with two eyelets, you know? So there's that one. And now this is this year's that I'm working on. Sorry for the glare. If you remember, this is a book that I reconstructed the spine it's a little golden book it's a newer version and it was actually gifted to me last year for christmas so i thought what a better way to use this book this particular book but to put my christmas cards in so again it has two signatures in it and what i used whoops what i used this is um this is just a picture of the four of us and then i i always put our stuff right in the front because you know it's our book and yeah and then I made a little pocket out of it you know and put our 2018 newsletter in there with a little uh, tab right yeah I always put our newsletter or a picture of us and I just think that it, you know it'll be fun years from now or even for my kids or grandkids or whatever to go through these and see the different pictures of us through the years you know um, again, scrap of paper that was sitting in my, in my drawer somewhere. So each of these signatures is, let me think, is six pages. Okay. Six pages a piece. And I probably could have done five each and been fine. Cause in this book, I do have a few extra pages. So I'm not completely done with it, but this is how I do it. Right. So I'm in the second signature here. And all I do is, where's my thing now? I take my ATG gun, right? And I will put on the perimeter and stick it down. That's it. That's all I do. I mean, occasionally I'll go through and like sometimes I have white pages. Like, let me see here. I just don't want to show pictures. Okay. So here are white pages, right? The inside. Okay, and I use brightly colored cards for this, you know, for the ones that are white backgrounds, whereas if the card itself is white, then I put it on a colorful background. Um, so I do kind of coordinate the cards with the paper and stuff like that. And um, yeah, so that's all I do. And I do not decorate it. I do not embellish it. I just, this is strictly for you know, memory keeping of the various cards I received. Again, there's nothing at all wrong with just recycling your cards. They are, it's a fabulous idea to use in Christmas junk journals to recycle Christmas cards. And I've done that in the past and I will continue to do that. But for the last six years, I've really enjoyed just making these super simple books. It took me like, you know, not very long at all yesterday to do it right make up the two signatures all I did was take a six by or no I'm sorry a 12 by 12 scrap of paper cut it down to size which was about eight inches about eight and a quarter no I'm sorry seven and seven eighths inches I think tall and then it's only six inches wide right because it's a 12 by 12 sheet of scrap of paper folded in half and 
that's all it is, you know? So the other thing that I found out, which was great, in making more journals, not for Christmas cards, but just junk journals in general, is I've always felt the need, and this is just a sidebar as I'm thinking about it now, I always felt the need to extend my pages, um, you know, because if you look and see, if you can see that, let's get it in the light here, right? There's about a half an inch of space here, right? Okay. When you're working in a little golden book, okay, that, that I guess I should have mentioned that. Yeah, when you're working in a little golden book, I've always like extended my scrapbook pages or my pages in general because I just have this thing about them being even on this side. But at the same time, I love to add on a junk journal, not in these books, but I love to add little tabs and dangles and trims and all that kind of stuff. And so this little half an inch right here gives you just enough space to have all that without a bunch of stuff spilling over the end. You know what I'm saying? So anyhow, I was just in here working on this this morning and thought I'd pop up a really quick video to show you a very simple, sorry for the glare, very simple, quick, easy way if you want to preserve your Christmas cards that people send you, friends and family, um, you know, for years to come. You know, like I said, I happen to just enjoy looking back and seeing how families have grown and just all of that you know I just I love it I love keeping my Christmas cards <laughs> so anyway quick super simple use up your Christmas um, scrapbook paper no need to embellish it because the cards themselves and the photos and beautiful families embellish it for you so super quick super easy super fun way to preserve your Christmas cards for the year and yeah, I hope I gave you an idea on what you can do with your cards if you want to keep them. And yeah, I'll talk at y'all soon. Thanks for sharing your time with me. Bye.